and we're rolling this thing is wide with these 900s on the back but uh it's coming through town here in wyoming headed up to the customer's place um and then my boss is picking me up and bringing me back and then i'll take my truck up and uh teach the customer how to run everything and get it set up on their ripper that they want to pull <laughs> Morning, everyone. We're uh, we're back here on Thursday morning, and uh, it's been a it's been a slow week, in all honesty. Um, no demos, uh, nothing going on there at all. That way, uh, the weather's been a little bit feisty with us here to allow us to do any beans or anything like that. So I think guys actually started rolling a little bit yesterday, which will be good. Um, the combine's still sitting in the same place as I had it when we did the demo two weeks ago, just because there's no point in moving it because we can't go anywhere. So this video this week, I think is going to be a little bit different. Um, as there was not a whole lot the first of the week, uh, I've actually got some stuff going on today, which will probably be the most of it. So a friend of mine from back when I was a kid, um, I grew up with his dad. Uh, he was like a grandpa to me. We lived next door and every chance I got to go for a ride with him, I was in that combine for the entire day or a tractor or whatever. I learned how to drive a tractor by him when I was six. So anyways, his son um, is still farming that farm and uh, he wanted to try a uh, fed out drawing wagons. Um, they used four sets of two hopper wagons to be able to run all their grain to the elevators. Right now he's using a competitive machine and they're slow and they burn a lot of fuel. So he wanted to try a fence. So knowing that he's not looking at anything new, 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 uh, I ended up taking out a used one. It's got about 3,800 hours on it. It's a 718 and uh, got it all set up for him. And um, the gentleman that's driving it for him drove it to the field yesterday, got there no problem, but he wanted me to show him how to run the cruise controls and everything this morning. So it's uh, 730. I'm just leaving the house now. I'm going to head out to um, the Nilestown area just north of Belmont, teach him how to do that. When we get finished there, uh, we're going to head out to Wyoming right afterwards, and they're delivering a new 1050 Fent to a customer out that way today. What ended up happening was the customer wanted John Deere GPS put into it rather than using the Fent. And um, I've always used a company called Egger GPS. Uh, Johannes has been really good to me from, uh, from Alberta there. He's designed and built this uh, little bridge module that we've used for years in the uh, class combines as well as now some of the Fent stuff. <clears throat> pardon me and uh i ended up convincing the guys to order one of these things because it's, it's a little bit cheaper than one of the other systems but it works as good or better so none of the service guys are available and i've done the install before so i'm going to go help do that so i'm going to videotape us doing the install doing the calibrations doing the setups and everything like that and then i'll get to deliver the tractor to the customer and teach them how to use it so that's going to be probably this week's video just a little different not necessarily stuff running in the field but uh doing some other things here. So I'm going to head out right now, get to Niles Town and uh, do that little start up there and then uh, carry on down to Wyoming. So this is the kit that comes with the Agri GPS. So we've got a cable that goes from the ISO port on the tractor down to the display. Another cable that goes from the main GPS port inside the headboard out to the bridge. And then from the bridge out to the antenna on the roof. And then it comes with its mounting kit for the roof on the top. And then I've got uh, a ram mount that goes in the tractor cab to be able to put the GPS into. So. Pretty simple here, I'll videotape us uh, ripping the headboard and stuff out so you can see how that goes. And probably 15, 20 minutes, we should have this thing all put together. Thank you. 
first part of this install is to come up on the roof. Uh, the roof hatch is held in place by two hinges and four screws. So by undoing the screws, the hinges can be lifted up and the uh, antenna mounting bracket goes underneath of them and then you put the screws back down through. What I realized is that the actual roof had to be lifted up a little bit here to be able to give me access to move the hinges in and out to where it actually needed to line up with the bolts. Now there's a couple different brackets for uh, different series where the fent tractors, this was for the new um, 50 that obviously we were doing before, but there's some for the other units that you can get as well and then the uh, receiver just clips into place next we're going to come in and we have to pull this headboard down um, and it's just a hex screw that you uh, you loosen off out of the four corners Once the screws are down, um, it's actually just a, a, a crisp pull down. Um, they're just some plastic little tabs that lock it into place. Try and pull evenly around um, all the corners and everything and eventually the whole headboard will pop down. So on the fent, that steel plate there is what the antenna is actually mounted to up inside the roof. Um, that's why you never see the antennas um, outside of the, the cab to uh, for people to steal or anything like that. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six 10 mil bolts you have to loosen off and that will let that plate drop down so we have access to the antenna. So it swings down, it's got a little red wire there that allows it to swing down to a certain point if you need to be able to work on it. Um, you unclip the red wire and the whole plate will slide down and then you just have to disconnect the one cable that goes between the headboard and the mounting plate. There's four bolts that hold on the antenna and two that hold on the um, telematics box to the side there. You take everything off and then this is where we'll re-attach uh, the bridge module from Agri GPS. So there's the whole GPS comes off. <clears throat> and now we just have to put this back on, double side tape it there and hook up the cables and we're ready to go. So I was putting the uh, RAM out on the back of the uh, 2630 display that they were going to use for um, the guidance in this tractor and then the fent comes with a side rail that uh, that can be directly mounted to um, using a ram mount ball. So once that's done, um, 
we move to the cable that goes inside the cab. Um, the first one is the ISO plug that's already plugged in there. The second is an auxiliary power cable that the John Deere monitor needs to give it time to be able to um, save uh, all the data when it's done. So that's plugging into a power system um, that's already on the tractor there. And I route the cable down through these hooks on the, the back cab post and then I'll run it up behind where that silver bar is and zip tie them up so they're nice and clean. Okay, so well, Caleb ran and grabbed me some double-sided tape to put on here. I usually mount this over here on this side because the cable's got to come up here and plug into the tractor here. So it just makes it a little bit easier to, to do that. Okay, so we'll go back up in the cab and... Uh, Okay, so we got this mounted. We put it back up in here after we connect it. Like that. And then this comes back in. Clips in. We're gonna do this to hold it up. Okay, so now we need to connect this cable to it. All right, so this one plugs into the auxiliary here, there, and then this loose one comes back and plugs into here. All right, we open the roof. We've been doing the cloth stuff together for, well, since I started cloth. Yeah. And uh, everything works. And if it doesn't, he'll figure it out for you. Yeah. So, huge props out to him for keeping it going. But, uh, it's really a quick install. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad at all. The hardest part is making sure that these stay down so that you can get the headboard back up and do it. Oh, yeah. So I know what, these wires for the GPS is just sneak out through they the headliner? sneak out through the headliner. Yeah. Sneak out through the, matter of fact, the roof seal there, or yeah. where is it? Yeah, yeah, it's the roof seal is where I put it out. Yeah, so. yeah I want to say, when I remember when I was talking to Grant and Jacob on the phone, they were switching that tractor over, he said, Agri, what was this company, Agri or something? Agri GPS? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
course I left it. All they're going to do with this thing is the tillage tractor, is what I'm understanding of it. So, so once the cables are uh, put back into place um, and everything's all zip tied up, it's putting that plate back up uh, using the, the 10 mil bolts and then um, proceeding to put the rest of the headboard up into place uh, the same way it was taken down. So headboard's done. We've got the monitor mounted. Cable's all tied back up behind. Cables are all up in the roof. And lastly, you come up on the roof and make sure that the antenna is plugged in and the cables are coming out the headboard nice and clean and that's it she's alive Once the GPS fired up here, um, the only thing I had to do was create a new machine. So I went into the machines tab, created a new tractor, and then put my offsets in. So I had a 48 inch offset from the axle forward to the antenna. I had a 44 inch offset from the axle to the hitch point on the tractor. And I had a 148 inch height that I put in for the antenna. So it's showing that we've got a detection there, so we're good there. We'll do that later. Okay, so let's go see what we got here. Alright, so we got an AB line set up over here. And I'm going to hit the auto steer engage. We're on the line, three inches off the line. So this is a Agra GPS bridge, and I've been using this with uh, Johannes for quite some time now. Um, if you are interested in seeing this unit for your own tractors, I'll make sure that I put the link down below. Um, he's been amazing for me with any tech support or whatever we needed with uh, the equipment that we've been running at. So I would highly suggest uh, giving him a shot at your tractors. We were using a different brand, which was almost double the price of what this is. And I literally just put this in in 30 minutes and it's calibrated and running and driving perfect. And I never even had to touch the sensitivities on the steering as of right now. So, um, so yeah, so this thing's bloody wicked. I'll show you the tractor in full when we get it backed up here. And uh, 
then we'll take it out to the field with the customer and get him started up with things and show him how it works. So here she is, 2024 1050. We just changed all the tires on this thing too. I'll show you some pictures I took the other day when they were doing that. But we've now got 710 60R38s on the front. And then the customer wanted uh, these 900s on the back. And she is a monster. So I think this is going to wrap the video up for today. Um, we got that tractor delivered to the customer, <clears throat> went, uh, went around it with them, went through all the screens and everything, showed them the uh, John Deere and how it all works within that, uh, that fence system there. So they're likely going to get that thing hooked up to, uh, actually it's a ripper that I sold to them a couple years ago. Um, and then I may end up getting back out there to see it at that point. But uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we got that all finished. Um, so I'm just headed home for the day, going to stop in at the London store to see what's going on there before I get out. But uh, anyways, I hope this uh, this was interesting today. It was a little different showing how the GPS gets put in and some of that sort of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there's any questions or comments, uh, please throw it down in the, in the section below. Um, I'll put the Agri GPS link down there as well. Um, Johannes is awesome and his team that he's got there. So feel free to reach out to him as well. So anyways, hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks.